Coffee Break Swedish, Season 1, Lesson 24. Hej och välkomna till Coffee Break Swedish. Jag heter Mark. Och jag heter Anna. Uh, hur mår du, Anna? Jag mår jättebra, Mark. Hur mår du? Idag mår jag lite trött. Ah, är det för det är lite dåligt väder ute hus? Dåligt väder, ja. Yeah. It's, it's been bad weather and I think that, that is, is making me tired. Ah, uh, I know the feeling. <laughs> we're back and we are here with another lesson. And in this lesson we're going to be looking at something very interesting and very important indeed. And that is all about, on the one hand, adjectives from a grammatical point of view. But from a kind of topical point of view, we're going to be describing people. Is that right, Hannah? Yes, talking about um, how people look and clothing is a really good chance to practice our, our skills in adjectives. Indeed. Now, we have talked about adjectives before. We do know some things about adjectives and describing words where we change them depending on whether it's an et word or an n word. But we're going to go through that in quite a kind of organised way. And uh, hopefully that will help uh, me understand it and all our listeners understand it too. So, ska vi börja? Ja, låt oss börja. Okay, Hannah, take it away. Okay, so I think we start with a question. And that is, what do you look like? So we we ask, hur ser du ut? Can you say that slowly, please? Hur ser du ut? Hur ser du ut? Ja. Literally, are we saying there, how see you out? Exactly. And I'm not saying it makes sense. But yes, that's how we ask somebody what they look like. Right. So obviously, that's a kind of strange question to ask someone, because if you're looking at them, then you'll probably see what they look like. But could we change that then to, for example, hur ser han ut? What does he look like? Ja. Precis. So you can uh, use this phrase with every um, every person. So, hur ser jag ut? I guess I could ask that if um, I'm just w- wondering how, how you think I'm looking. Okay. Hur ser, hur ser jag ut? Ja. Och um, do you remember how you would say, uh, what does she look like? Uh, hur ser uh, hon ut? Precis. Perfect. Could I say, hur ser uh, din vän ut? Ja, absolut. So, how, what does your friend look like? And so on. Ja, or I could say, um, hur ser Mark ut? If I don't know, if I didn't know how you look like. So, how would you say, incredibly handsome? <laughs> well, don't, don't get it, uh, too ahead of yourself here. Um, okay. <laughs> we will practice that, I promise you. By the end of, of today, you will, will be able to say, I look very handsome. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so coming to the answer, Hannah, do we say, ja, ser, something, ut? Um, that would make sense, wouldn't it? But it's much more simple than that. Okay. So we will use um, two verbs that you are very familiar with. We will say, jag är och jag har. Oh, right. I am and I have. Yes. So if we start with jag är, Mm -hmm. and I I guess that is what you were talking about with I am handsome. Okay. Yeah. So how would we say that? (laughs) Jag är stilig. Stilig. Mm-hmm. Do you like it? Okay. I, I do like it. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like kind of stylish or something like that. Yeah. Stilig. <laughs> Jag är stilig. It sounds also a little bit, um, I, I maybe should learn how to say I am modest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, how would you say that just to, just so that our listeners know? Well, Mark, um, I, I think you need to, to learn to say Jag är blygsam. Blygsam, so that's modest. <laughs> ja, or maybe jag är väldigt blygsam. <laughs> jag är väldigt blygsam. Mm-hmm. Okay, so maybe we shouldn't say jag är stilig, but um, I guess we could talk about someone else being stilig. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Can we say the same thing for a, a female person? If it's a female person, I would uh, use instead vacker. Vacker. 
Okay. Um, eller söt. Söt. Okay, söt, I think we've come across in food. Is that not something to do with sweet? Yes, so it means pretty, but it also means um, sweet. Okay, so let's go through those two words again. Vacker. Vacker. Söt. Söt. Okay, right, let's get back to our list of words, because I know that you've got some words that you want to, to teach us here. So what are these words? Yeah, so if we think in a more um, objective way, how we would describe ourselves. Um, okay. If I would say, for example, that I am short, I would say, Jag är kort. Jag är kort. Uh, now, is that like... Um, uh, me court, as in with a card? No. Do you remember that we can pronounce this in different ways? So if we talk about the cards, we pronounce it court. Court. But if we talk about a length of something or height of something, we say court. Court. Okay, so it's a slightly different vowel sound, but spelled the same, yeah? Yes. And to a sweet, okay. it sounds completely different. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that would be short, kort. Um, what about tall? Long. Oh, right, okay. So you can describe someone as tall uh, by saying they're long. Ja, precis. Um, so jag är lång. Jag är lång. Ja. And what do you think this means? Jag är small. Well... I would kind of think it would mean I am small, but we've already learned kort. Yes, so is that you are thin? Okay, jag är small. Bra. And then we have the opposite, and is shock. Okay, jag är shock. How do you spell shock? Uh, it's spelled T J O C K. Okay. These sh sounds and the h sounds, they are, they are tricky. Um, so this one's T-J-O-C-K. What other word have we learned that's T-J that sounds like a sh? Um, we have learned shiena. Shiena, that's right. It's like a, a kind of cool greeting, isn't it? Exactly. Okay, what about a couple of other words? What about young and old? So if I am young, I say jag är ung. Ung. Jag är ung. And, if I'm not mistaken, I think we already know old because we learned it about, about birthdays. I am four years old and so on. Jättebra. So what is the word for old? I think it's gammal. Ja, great. Jättebra. So jag är gammal. Jag är gammal. Ja. Okay. And we talked a little bit about adjectives. And here you can... I don't know if you notice here, but all the adjectives here are in the N form. Right. I noticed that none of them, apart from kort, ended in a T. So I guess that was maybe the case, but I wasn't sure about kort. Yeah, kort is, is always ends with a T. Okay. So um, are there et forms of these adjectives too? Absolutely. However... Here we talk about a person. We're describing a person. And a person is always an N-word. Mm -hmm. So if you remember we talk, we, when we talked about N or et and how we know that it's an N-word, that anything describing human beings are N-words or any living things are N-words. Yeah. Could we perhaps look at just a couple of these with the, the et form as well? Yeah, absolute. So if we have long, for example... If we talk about hair, it's an et word, for example. So you say, if you say long hair, you say longt hår. Okay, so could we say um, kort hår? Of course, it's kort because it's that doesn't change. Yeah, exactly. However, if you are talking about it in plural, then we put an a on the end always. So if you talk, say that you have short legs, mm -hmm. it's korta. Bien. So we learned the word for bien a couple of lessons ago, uh, the, the, the leg. So, uh, ja har korta bien. Ja, so with that in mind, what, what, how would you describe your long legs? <laughs> um, ja har långa bien. 
Perfect. I think it's quite easy. It's just about trying to remember it. And I think especially when, when you're just speaking to get the adjectives right. Yeah. Okay. So um, you started talking about hair there. Perhaps we should look at some more descriptions in that sense and talk about different types of hair. But in that case, we need to use a different verb. So we use har instead of ad. So mm-hmm. I have long hair. Ad, jag har långt hår. Jag har långt hår. Can you just say the words for have and hair together? Har is have. Hår is hair. Right. So har hår. Jättebra. Okay. Jag har långt hår. Ja, and now you know the reason why, because hår is a net word. Yep. Um, and should we see if you remember? What, what If you would say, I have short hair, how would you say it? Jag har kort hår. Perfect. So, colors is obviously adjectives as well. And I think colors is a, a, a good way of practicing adjectives. So, if we think about hair color... And you say that you have brown hair. It works in the same way. You put a T on the end. So it's jag har brunt hår. Jag har brunt hår. Ja. Jag har blont hår. So I'm guessing that's blond hair. Jag har blont hår. Um, What would be black hair? It's a little bit like... Kort, because uh, black is svart and it ends with a T, but jag har okay. svart hår. Jag har svart hår. I think we've, we've covered svart before. Um, and uh, grey hair? Jag har grått hår. Jag har grått hår. So, in each case, hår is uh, uh, an et word. Mm-hmm. So we're using the et form of these adjectives, långt, kort, brunt, blont, grått, and I think you said svart. Yeah. Okay. Perhaps our listeners, I don't have a beard, but perhaps some of our listeners have a beard. What about a beard? Oh, you're going to like this word. It's hwig. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hwig. So how are we spelling that one? I know that there are many spellings. S-K-E-G-G. So we've got S K A with an umlaut E G G uh, G G. So so hweg, yeah. Yeah, perfect, bra. And hweg is also an et word. So if you if you have a grey beard, what would you say then? Uh, no, is it jag har et grot hweg? Jättebra, jag har et grot hweg. Okay, can I double check if it were a white beard? Um, I know we've talked about white wine and uh, white cars and so on. So we, we've learned uh, two words for the, the N and the et form there. But I find it quite difficult to pronounce them because of the E sound. So would it be jag har et vitt skägg? Ja, jag har ett vitt skägg. And for a Swede at least, you can hear that it's two T's in that. And if yeah. you had only one T, which you would have when it comes to an N word, you would say vit. Okay, vit. So what you just said, vit, is for an N word. Yeah, so let's hear them both together. So um, for an N word. Vit. For an et word. Vit. You say them both one after another. Vit, vit. 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 Jättebra. Completely different. <laughs> I'm sure our <laughs> listeners ag- agree with, with you. <laughs> I find it quite pretty difficult to see a difference there. But um, yeah. Okay. One one further thing just before we break. Um, there is another thing that we often describe when we're, we're describing people and that would be eyes. But they're plural. So uh, we're going to have to change those adjectives again, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, isn't that great? So we can practice it. Um, Plural adjectives. So we just put an A on the end. So, and plural of eyes is ögon. We had that when we had ont. Um, we had sore eyes and things like that. Yeah, exactly. A couple of lessons ago. Well done. Um, so if you have blue eyes, you would say, Jag har blåa ögon. Jag har blåa ögon. 
jag har gröna ögon. Jag har gröna ögon. That's green eyes. Och jag har bruna ögon. Jag har bruna ögon. Okay. Can you just give us the word for blue again in the plural? Blåa. Blåa. So, what's going on there? Yeah, so blue is a, a little bit different and the same with grey, grå. And you can see the 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 similarities blå och grå ha, have that they ends with a o. And o is a vowel in Swedish. In Swedish, we don't like to have vowels next to each other. So when we speak, we can put that A on the end. Uh, blåa, gråa. But when we write, we, we might just not use the A. So we, we can say, jag har blå ögon. Jag har grå ögon. Um, and, and both of, of those are correct. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Can I just check so that I've made, made sense of this in my head as well? Um, if I had a blue beard, mm-hmm. would I say jag har ett blått skägg? Ja, jättebra. Right, so the blå, so it's blå for n words, blått for ett words, and then blåa or just blå for the plural for blå. Yes, well, well done. You seem to to get it, but we're going to practice some more after the break when we speak about clothing. Okay, well, we will be back in just a moment to do that. All the Coffee Break Swedish podcast episodes are free, but did you know there's a full online course available? We offer video versions of the lessons where you see the words and phrases on the screen of your device. There are lesson notes providing further information and additional vocabulary and a bonus audio episode for every lesson. To find out more about our online course, go to coffeebreakswedish.com. Okay, Hannah, so far we've learned uh, how to describe people. Uh, in fact, we've learned how to describe ourselves, but I think we can just change the, the, the word ja to other people, can't we? Yes, and that's the easy part of Swedish, isn't it? That we don't have to conjugate verbs and things like that. But unfortunately, when it comes to clothing, we're going to have to practice a little bit about reflexive pronouns. All right, okay, take it away then. <laughs> okay, so... um. First, I'm, are we going to uh, learn how to ask what somebody is wearing? If I, I if I ask you, Mark, what am I wearing? I would say, vad har jag på mig? Right, so hang on. This Does this mean what have I on me, literally? Yes. Vad har jag på mig? Yeah, and if you don't have that me, for a Swede, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay. So what do I have on myself in a sense? Yeah. Okay. So could I ask then, vad har du? Oh, no, I don't know what the, the next word is then. Po dig? Yeah, well done. So this is what we need to practice today. So uh, vad har jag på mig becomes when I ask about you, vad har du på dig? Okay. Vad har du på dig? Um, what about what is he wearing? So, in third person is the same, or uh, the reflexive pronoun. So, vad har han på sig? Vad har hon på sig? Och vad har hen på sig? Right. Okay. So, på sig. Um, how are you spelling sig? Well, it's a good question. It's S-I-G. Okay. Um, so, is uh, dig D-I-G. Exactly. And me is M-I-G. But we have to um, pronounce it as is E-J in the end. Me, de, se. Me, de, se. Okay, so vad har ja på mig? Vad har du på dig? Vad har han på sig? Vad har hon på sig? Vad har hen på sig? Ja. What about the plural ones? So, the plural one is vad har vi på oss? Right, so what do we have on ourselves? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> vad har vi på oss? Yeah, and what are you wearing on yourself 
Dennis, vad har ni på er? Vad har ni på er? Ja, and the last one, what are they wearing on themselves? Vad har de på sig? Okay, so we're back to the say again. Vad har de på sig? And the dom is spelled D-E, correct? Ja. Yeah. Okay, good. So, uh, th- those reflexive pronouns, as you've, you've described them as, they were me, de, se, os, er, se. Ja, yeah, perfect. And you get another chance to practice that because if you answer that it's the same same thing so if i'm starting with i am wearing then i say jag har på mig oh right so do you say jag har på mig and then say it what it is you're wearing yes so you can't say jag har a blue shirt på mig nej så jag har på mig en blå skjorta Right, we'll come to those in a moment. So, jag har på mig. Um, so, can I, can I try these then? Yeah. Um, jag har på mig. Uh, du har på dig. Han har på sig. Hon har på sig. Hen har på sig. Uh, vi har på oss. Ni har på... Uh, it's not ni. Um, er? Ja, bra. Ni har på er. De har på sig. Perfekt, jättebra. And now we put the, the stress on the pronoun because we were practicing. But when you say it normally, the stress is on the på. Okay. So if, if we, we try with actually either more clothing. So if I um, start with, jag har på mig en tröja. Uh, what is en tröja? Tröja is a very useful word because anything that you have on your upper body can be a tröja. All right, okay, so a top, I guess. Yes, so you can have a, 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 a knitted tröja, you can have a t-shirt is a tröja, anything is a tröja. Anything, okay. So, jag har på mig, jag har på mig en tröja. Ja, um, jag har på mig ett skärp. Okay, I'm racking my brains as to any word in any language that I know <laughs> that could give me a clue here. Um, it sounds a little bit like a une écharpe in French, which is a scarf. <laughs> oh, well done. Um, it's a belt. Oh, right. Okay. It, it, say it again. A scherp. Scherp. A scherp. Okay. What else? Jag har på mig ett par byxor. Um, you've got a pair of boxer shorts on? No, no. <laughs> we we on the right. We we are almost there. It's a pair of trousers. Ah, right. Okay. Um, say it again. Jag har på mig ett par byxor. Jag har på mig ett par byxor. Ja, bra. Um, jag har på mig en skjorta. Jag har på mig en skjorta. Um, um, a skirt? Nästan a, a, sh- a, a shirt. A shirt, right. Let's hear that again then. Jag har på mig en skjorta. Jag har på mig en skjorta. So what is a skirt? That, that was the next one actually. Jag har på mig en kjol. Right, see, that sounds like a shawl in English. Um, but we've got to imagine a shawl worn on the bottom half of the body. Jag har på mig en shawl. Yeah, so it's a lot of sh and sh sounds that you have to practice today. Yeah. Um, jag har på mig en jacka. Jag har på mig en jacka. That must be a jacket. Ja, bra. And the last one, jag har på mig ett par skor. Jag har på mig ett par skor. Ja. A pair of shoes? Ja, absolut. So you notice that, that most clothing is N-words, but we also have some plurals because obviously um, shoes, you often wear two at the, the, the same time. But you heard that we said ett par byxor. 
och ett par skor. Um, and that is them in plural. We talk about a pair. And it's the pair that is the et word. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that makes sense. So the et, et par, the reason we're using et there is because it's the word par that is et, yeah? Yes, and byxor, okay. plural, skor, two of them. Yeah, okay. And we also had et skärp, yeah? Yes, I, I thought we okay. needed to add something that had an et word so we can practice our adjectives. Well, I was just wondering is, if that's where we're going. Are we now going to make these coloured clothes? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know me by now, Mark. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's right. try. So, what about if we say that instead of I am wearing, we could say you are wearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what was that? Du har på dig. Yeah, so du har på dig. And if I would say a yellow top... I would say, du har på dig en gul tröja. Du har på dig en gul tröja. Now, we learned gul, gul when we were learning about the Sami flag in our kulturhörnan. So, gul, uh, jag har, or du har på dig en gul tröja. You've got a yellow top on. Yes, yeah, so en, en tröja is an N word. We don't change gul. It's just staying the same. However, you just said about uh, skärp, belt, is an et word. So, du har på dig ett gult skärp. Right, okay. Du har på dig ett gult skärp. So, skärp being the et word, then gult takes the, e the extra t uh, because it is the et form of the adjective. Ja, perfekt. And then we talk about trousers, and trousers, what we just said, are plural. So, du har på dig ett par gula byxor. That's interesting, because I was wondering where the gula, or the gul, or whatever was going to come. I wondered if it was going to be ett gult par byxor. Ah, no, no, no. Doesn't okay. make sense. <laughs> Fair enough. So, ett par gula byxor. Ja, perfekt. So if we try with some some other colors, so um, uh, du har på dig en röd skjorta. Du har på dig en röd skjorta. Um, you've got a red shirt on. Yeah, well done. I think we talked about red and, and white wine a long time yes, ago. Yes, we did. We? Yeah. Yeah. So, röd. Rött and röd. Perfect. Och du har på dig en svart kjol. Du har på dig en svart kjol. Uh, you are wearing a black skirt. Ja, perfekt. And like we talked about before, svart is a T in the end, end, so it will be svart, en word, svart, ett word, and then plural, then we say svarta. Svarta, okej. Okay. Ja, Um, du har på dig en blå jacka. Du har på dig en blå jacka. Um, you've got a blue jacket on. Ja, perfekt. And the last one. Du har på dig ett par vita skor. Okej, okay. du har på dig ett par vita skor. Um, a pair of white shoes. Yeah, perfect. Well done, Mark. Excellent. Well, we're going to leave it there. <laughs> Now, this has been quite a, a grammatical lesson because it's, I guess these are things that we have to cover at some point, this agreement of adjectives where we, we do our, our N and et and plural forms of the adjectives. But it's been good to do that within the context of talking about clothes because we can, we can, we can explain what people look like and describe them and, and, and so on. So thank you for that, Hannah. Varsågod, uh, Mark. <laughs> if you'd like to get more out of this episode of Coffee Break Swedish, of course, you can head over to the Coffee Break Academy, where we provide the lesson notes and a bonus audio recording. And we're just about to record that audio recording now. And we're going to be doing some practice of all of these uh, types of clothing and, and, and descriptions. There is also the video version of the lesson where you see the words and phrases on the screen of your device. So you can find out all about this at coffeebreakacademy.com. 
And you can find us on Facebook. Just search for Coffee Break Swedish. And we post regular content to help you build your culture and knowledge of all things Swedish. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, we will be posting some challenges there to have you describe some people based on what they are wearing. So you can look forward to trying out this new language over on Facebook. That's it for this lesson. Tack så mycket, Hanna. Varsågod. Tack så mycket, Mike. Och vi ses snart. Hej då. You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radiolingua Network. Copyright 2021 Radiolingua Limited. Recording copyright 2021 Radiolingua Limited. All rights reserved. <laughs>